I've teased about this for virtually the longest time and since uh, BRO season's coming out, I decided today I would finally choose to cover this deck profile. It's Dungaree. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mr. Four here. Today, I'm back to cover Dungaree. Now, I know that we've recently lost Dungus and, you know, Narukami is in a really, really horrible place in premium. O almost new nectar levels of crap. And, you know, with NLK and Green Nature and you know, steam maidens and whatever it is is running around these days. I, I figured we go back to V and we talk about something a little more nicer and a little more relevant, especially for the English players who are preparing for BRO season. So today I'm actually covering my Dungri deck profile. Now this deck is a lot more experimental in the sense that I'm trying a lot of different ratios and a lot of other things that I still quite enjoy and I hope you actually will too. So uh, yeah, it's time for me to just jump straight into it. My grade 3 lineup is basically just 4 Dungaree and 4 copies of Janky Short Dragoon. Uh, it's a very simple lineup, you notice I don't even play stuff like the Jin, the grade 3 Jin, because uh, I don't really believe in it to be fair. Uh, but let me cover what all these cards actually do. Uh, Dungaree has um, two very simple skills. Uh, during the battle phase, when the battle phase begins, as long as your opponent's Vanguard's grade 3 greater, you can bind the top card of your deck. Now, the reason why you are self-binding is because you're trying to contribute towards Dungaree's second skill, which is on VOR, when this unit attacks, you move all of the cards from your bind zone into your drop zone, and you resolve the effects equal to the number of cards you moved. If you move 2 or less, this unit gets minus 10k, minus 1 crit, minus 2 drive. Ouch. Uh, if you move 4 more, you choose one of you choose one card from your opponent's hand at random, and they have to bind it. Uh, the third, the fifth, the third skill is that if you return five or more cards from your bind zone to your drop zone, choose three cards from your drop zone and shuffle them back into the deck. Yeah, so basically you self bind in a turbo way in order to fuel your dungaree. And the reason why you have such a big stat increments is because he actually has triple drive, um, 17k power, and two crit base, which is quite insane. So generally, as long as you feed him three or more bind units, you generally will get the full stat increase, but the more you give him, the better. Just be careful to pace how much you bind so you actually can you know, enjoy this effect over a longer period of time. Next up, we have Jackie Shot Dragoon, whom you will know from um, Vanquisher, but Jackie Shot actually serves a nicer purpose in this deck. So his skill here is completely relevant, but the other skill you want to see is that when he attacks, you bind a card from your hand, choose one of your opponents from your rearguards and bind it. Then, if your opponent has no more front row rear guards, you draw a card. So, as long as you manage to empty your opponent's front row, you basically get a cycle draw and you contribute to the bind. Him just being a simple on attack is the easiest way to bind your own cards. Moving on to our great tools, our great tools we play uh, four copies of Zubaya, we play four copies of this guy, and then we play four copies of Ren Ren, and then we also play two copies of Cho -O as tech. I told you we were doing a more experimental deck profile, so yeah, this is kind of to be expected. So I think it's kind of easy to say I'll just go through Cho O first. Cho O is just a two off just to fill up a slot. When placed, you count plus one, choose your opponent's column and bind the opponent's front rear guard in it, and you can move the back row rear guard of that column from the back row to the front. Uh, yeah, it counters resist, so it's nice in the resist matchup. And it's also just a free bind. It also works on VR, so you can tackle early aggression. That's why I still believe Cho is still a really good card for a generic. Second skill is that uh, when your Vanguard attacks, your opponent has no front row rear guards, you come last one, you stand him. Yeah, you, you just stand him. And considering this is a deck with like Dungri, which really goes through your triggers and it stacks the deck virtually quite well. So it's a nice to have an extra V standard. It is a color blast, but frankly, you don't use color blast that often in this deck, so two is fine. Moving on, I'll talk about Ren Ren. When uh, rolled upon, you color blast one. Uh, you look at the top two cards of your deck, you bind one of them from among them, and then the other you put to your hand. So it's a free plus one for the color blast, and you fill up the bind, which is nice. And once per turn, there's an X skill on the rear guard circle, color blast one and bind the top card of your deck. You gain 5k. This unit gets 5k for every grade of the bottom card, if it's a grade zero you draw. So, generally speaking, you want to buy a grade 0 so you can actually plus, but if not, just any normal bound card will still give you some power and it does fill your bind, and it is an X skill. So you can use it over multiple turns per copy, which 
which is nice, but it does cause a ton of dust. Moving on to this, I'll cover him first. Uh, he was actually introduced in set 5, as you can see. And when they introduced him in set 5, I knew from the start that they were going to do Dungaree in V, and I was right. So what does he do is that when he's placed, you just bind one of your rear guards, and then during your turn, he gains 10,000 power. So he's a cons consistent 19k attacker, and he's the strongest grade 2 in the entire lineup, uh, besides Ren Ren, who can scale up to 24k, but if not, then this guy is constantly going 19k, with your XL, he goes even higher. So he's just a really wonderful beast thing. You don't really want to ride him, but if not, he's really good. Next off, we have this guy. This is Korban. Korban skill is very simple. Uh, during the turn, uh, if you have Awesome behind him, he gains 3,000 power. And at the end of the battle, that is unit attacks. If he's boosted by Awesome, you count plus one, bind all of the rare guards in the same column, and then you draw two cards. Yes, this works on V and R. So if you literally just put an Awesome behind your Vanguard, you can just bind this guy and you get an additional two draw, which is really good, by the way. That's a plus one there. And you still make magic numbers, so yeah. Moving on to our grade one lineup, our grade one lineup, we do play uh, four copies of Awesome, four copies of Len Len. We play uh, two Mighty Bob and one Rising Phoenix. Uh, like I said, this is experimental, but I really kind of like this little split because it gives me more variety. Rising Phoenix, because you do bind a lot of rare guards, and because you do shuffle, you drop a lot. Just having a one copy to just bounce around the board and be bound is fine. I would like to play more Rising Phoenix, just like I would like to play more Mighty Bolt, but I don't have space, so I just settle on having one, because just seeing the one copy play around during the end game is nice. And then of course I have two copies of Mighty Bolt, Mighty Bolt is your generic Great Tree Searcher. Uh, when placed on V and R, you look at the top 5 cards of deck, add a Great Tree from one of your hand, and then you discard one. So nice to just look for Dungri, extra consistency, and during your turn on the regular circle, if a card is bound, you gain 5. Okay, not bad. Moving on to this guy, why does he combo so well with Korban? It's very simple, awesome. If he's in the same column as Korban, he gains 3000 power. And when he's placed, if Korban is already in the same column as him, you can counter charge 1. This counts for the Vanguard, so you can ride him and then call him and counter charge. Which is nice, and he's one of the easiest ways to counter charge because you just need to place him, which is really nice. So you kind of just loop Korban and awesome to just draw, counter charge, draw, counter charge, draw, counter charge. If it's the same column, you can bind two cards, which straight away fills your dungree. If not, if you're talking about turn two play, it's a pretty two, it's a pretty good turn two gaming engine because it binds all of the rear guards in the column. You can bind your opponent's side as well, so you can instantly just spot remove two, or if it's the Vanguard, you can even spot remove the one hiding behind the Vanguard, which is just it's just wonderful, honestly, as an interaction. It's just great. And then last but not least, with her, Lin Lin. Lin Lin, her skill is when rolled upon, you simply just bind the top card of your deck. Yeah, it's not bad. And then the second skill is that uh, you so if your opponent's grade to a greater, you sow plus one, you bind a card from your hand, you draw a card. So it's just a nice cycle. It is so you don't really want to use this skill a lot because she's just an 8k fueler. But other than that, she's fine. And for our grade zeros, our grade zeros, we play... Uh, 4 crit sentinels, but we also play a total of 10 crits, we play 4 heal guards, uh, we play 2 draws, and then we play 1 starter. So the reason why we want to play so many of these critical triggers is because we really go through the deck very fast, uh, and I mean very fast. So you do want to just make sure that crits, because you can really just completely just rush your opponent to death with dungaree. To the point it's virtually insane. Starter, I just chose this one because it's nice. Heal guards because generally speaking, you do want to actually live till turn three. Then you can let Dungaree replay if you're defensive. This is a 17k base. So all in all, it's just a pretty good way of building the deck. And that wraps up my Dungaree deck profile. I've gone through this deck. I played this deck. I love this deck a lot. And I really wish I could talk more about it. But it's very simple. It's really as simple as it gets in terms of advantage gaining, in terms of manipulation, in terms of resource management, in terms of aggression, in terms of control. It's really, really simple and really, really fun. It is a thinking man's deck in the sense that you do need to pace yourself. You can't really play this brainlessly. 
But as you see through this list, I'm taking more experimental edges and doing things that I don't normally do in my deck profiles because I feel Dungree actually has the strength to do it. Price point wise, it's very affordable because there's no BRs in this deck. Despite the fact that it looks a lot like a Dragonic Vanquisher deck, you notice that there is no single VR in this deck and three quarters only cards have all been reprinted. So you really shouldn't have an issue. Until Unlimited, all I can say is just keep binding, pulling your crits and just crushing the opponent. Because even if Lua has seven great trees in a soul, it won't matter if he has six damage. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.